Hey everybody, Reptile Rescue family members, how are you doing? Today is going to be a serious video. Um, and I've got some equipment set up, some testing, some measuring, my solar meter. And uh, today's video is going to be talking about the Bearded Dragon Owners. This is a Facebook group, but I want to be very clear. Bearded Dragon Owners, the B, the D, and the O, these are capital letters. There is another group called Bearded Dragon Owners where they're all lowercase, and they're not crazy. This group will kill your bearded dragon. This group has like 68,000 members. And there is a female moderator in there who's active, who's just horrible. Um, I joined this group because a friend said, hey, you should get in there. I see a lot of bad information and try to help, educate, etc. I messaged the admin. I would be more than happy to be a moderator. I'd be more than happy to work with your moderators. Here's my credentials. 15 years of running a professional rescue. More years working with reptiles. Working with local zoos here. Large zoos. The Detroit Zoo. Cincinnati Zoo, etc. Here in the United States. Working with zoos overseas. Working with vets here in the U.S. And working with vets overseas to develop techniques and um, things for reptiles. No answer back, whatever. So I've answered some posts, and we're going to go over some of these. And the moderator deemed to uh, suspend me, remove my post due to bad advice um, and advertising, which she's a complete lunatic. But the problem is she gives really bad advice. And if you disagree with her, you will just get destroyed. You will get shut down. I can't say her name. You can go look her up. It's an active moderator in this group. You should let her know she's horrible. This is a bad group. If you're in this group, you're getting bad advice. And I saw people getting bad advice left and right. So we're going to start with what was the first bad advice? Because, guys, I've tested everything. And I like to test my things, show proof, show details, not just say things. Um, the biggest one will – let's – we're going to start here. We're going to start with – Compact fluorescent and UVB. This is what's really important. So I actually have, here's my UVB. Now this is an eight inch dome. The bulb actually sits up here. This is where the tip of the bulb is. This is a 10.0. Let's show you everything on the up and up. Compact fluorescent. That's right. The only thing to be on the up and up, this has been on for about five minutes. Just like a tube light, you know, needs to fully power up, heat up to push out the UV. Um, then I have a tape measurer. So I want you to see distance. Right, so keep in mind that this is already, you know, about two inches in there to, from the ground. Here's about two inches. That's about, and this is 10, it's about 14, 15 inches. Your normal basking spot should be about eight, sometimes 10, 12 is really pushing it. If you're at those higher distances, you need higher than a 10.0 UV bulb. Okay, I've talked about UV, I've talked about screens. I did a huge video for this, but I must tell you, this group is so lost about UVB, it's pathetic. People saying you must mount the tube lights inside the tank. If it goes on the screen, it will degrade your UVB. Well, that's wrong. I did a whole video using a mercury vapor, complex fluorescent, T8 and T5s. This screen doesn't degrade the UVB at all. It was under 0.1%. So we'll just say nil. It's so insignificant. It's nil. And then they're telling people, okay, mount it inside. You can mount inside. That's safe. If you get the correct bulb, I see people saying, get the Arcadia, which I recommend Arcadia bulbs, guys, the best tubes out there, and get the 14% one and mount it in eight inches away from your dragon. My God, that's going to cause a sunburn. So we're going to talk about UVB first. Why? Oh, well, great. Some lady commented what type of bulbs, if CFL, CFLs are good, etc. cetera. So I'll tell you, a 10.0 CFL is much better than a T8 bulb, even at 10.0. That T8 bulb is almost giving off no UVB, and it's going to flicker extremely high, um, which is really bad for your bearded dragon's eyes. So, I commented, oh no, this is what she commented to me. If you use any CFL, your bearded dragon will, in capitals, will not, in capitals, get enough UVB and it will get MBD, and it will die. I sat there shaking my head. This is a moderator. She says, you know, if you ever get an account removed from a group, they send you a little reason as to why your um, it's, your post was removed, your comment. And I sat there like, what? Surely she knows there's different levels of CFL bulbs. 
just like there are different levels of tube, there's 5.0 CFL, there's 10.0, there's 5.0 tubes, which a 10.0 CFL would be better. There's 10. Um, sometimes, guys, you see them in 10.0, 5.0, or sometimes you see percent, 10%, 12%, 14%. It's the same. That's the amount of UVB. Okay. So I looked at that and I was like, surely this person can't be an idiot. I asked her, I said, are you measuring? Are you using a solar meter? She doesn't even know what the heck a solar meter is. I said, do you know what Ferguson zone the bearded dragon is supposed to be in? She doesn't even know what the heck Ferguson zones are. Here's the moderator telling people advice. 70,000 members, 70,000. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. So bearded dragons, let's go over this. And I'm not, I'm this, the UV part is going to be brief. I have a whole video talking about this. Ferguson zones. It's in the wild where your reptile comes from, what it is. When you're setting up, I'm going to tell you right now, the only way to set UVB up correctly is with one of these. And you reference the chart for the um, the study that was done on every single lizard, every single reptile, where they come from, their Ferguson zones, their winter treatment, their their times that they brumation, the, the type, are they cooling, are they brumating, etc. I took this list and I just threw the inland bearded dragon. Here's the Latin name. Here is the common name, inland bearded dragon, That's or central bearded dragon. This is about 99% of your bearded dragon pets. There is another bearded dragon. We're not going to talk about it because it's not your pet. It's not your pet going around uh, there. So it'll tell you what biomes they're from. And then you can look up like what's biome one. These are in biome seven, eight, 12, and 13. The Ferguson zone index, it is an index three through four. Okay. And then there's a ton of other, the basking temperatures. These are in Celsius. The area that they're from, what is, is the normal air temperature in the summer and in the winter. This is really smart. What temperature do they normally brumate in? You know, and then it says night temperatures. This is day, this is night. This, the microhabitat. The people in this group, they don't have a clue. They've never seen this in their entire life. That moderator, she's an idiot. Um, and I brought this up to her. So we know bearded dragons are an index of three to four. I'm gonna show you the CFL 10.0, how we get to that. Um, that's not three to four on the UV meter. That is your rating, like three to four of UVB, uh, UVI output, UVB output, your UVI is your UV index, puts you in zone three. Five, six, seven, that puts you in zone four. So we're shooting from anything between three and really seven. Anything above seven, you're going to get a sunburn. Your bearded dragon's going to hide. It's not going to want to be out. It's not good. And I'll tell you right now, mounted eight feet away or eight inches away, 10 inches away in Arcadia, 14% bulb, you're going to be off the charts because I'll show you this um, with this bulb. So this bulb's been heating. So we know that that bulb's two inches up and this is two inches off. So we want to look for eight. So we're going to put this at six inches. Okay. Right there. That sensor is right at six inches. We're going to move forward. So this is an eight inch basking spot. Okay. Here we go. We've got to find the spots a little hard. Four, 4.1. This is at eight inches away. If we find the actual spot. So guess what index this is in, everybody? That's right. It's in the Ferguson. It's at the top end of zone three, approaching zone four. This is at the top end. Amazing. Almost like that's where your bearded dragon is supposed to be. And in fact, if you if you move it around and you find like the perfect angle where your hammock would be and your bearded dragon would be laying, it gets to 5.1. That puts you in the Ferguson zone. That means a CFL can put you in a Ferguson zone. That's why it's very important when you recommend UVB size of the tank. What if it's a short tank but long? You can't put a 12% Arcadia up there. But they're idiots. She's an idiot. She has no clue. Absolutely no clue. And I have to apologize, guys, if I seem fired up. But this lady is telling people like the gospel according to her and banning people, the largest group. And she has no idea. Now, the one that actually got me bail banned was the nail cutting question. People always ask, how do I cut bearded dragon nails? And then almost everyone, including her, posted this picture um, about, and doesn't have the bottom, but it posts this tissue cut here. Here's dead tissue. Here's live tissue. This is a old way of thinking, and this can work. But most of the time, this is if your bearded dragon's nails are perfect. And most people are going for their first time cuts. And I want to show you. Here's a picture right on this old one about the live bearded dragon's nails. Where would you cut them? Cut them. These bearded dragon's nails are way overextended. Your this bearded dragon. 
The live tissue is actually right about here, way back there. Why are we only gonna cut this? It's very interesting. Um, because for cats, you know, you always cut back to right before the vein, right? This live tissue is gonna be the quick. This is important for later, guys. And it's a vein, okay? It's a vein, you can kind of see the blood vessels. If you cut the live tissue, you get bleeding, okay? We'll talk about that later. But sometimes their nails overextend and you need this nail to come back. You need this vein to retreat. Cutting it here, where it's recommended and where where she recommends it to cut is not good. It will not get this vein to retreat. This vein will still continue to be forward. If you just cut the hypodermic tip, you're not retreating the vein, which we see is right there. Something like this, if you're using a cutter, should be cut like this. This is where it should be cut, where I'm starring it. Now, this is still far away from the vein, as she calls it, the live tissue. Um, and it will start to get, this vein will start to retreat. Well, just like a cat, dog, just like everything. It will start to retreat, and then you can continue to cut this back to get them at the perfect height. Look at how big these nails are, and it says cut here. This should be cut, you know, again, we can't see the live tissue, but it should be cut something like this. I, this one, we can kind of see the live tissue. It's right there. So we're going to cut here, just in front of the live tissue. That's going to get and that's going to get rid of that. Um, and this is also why this is not a good reference because this puts the live tissue past this piece right here, and that's very seldom the case. Most of the time, the live tissue, as we see, is going to be behind that piece. Not always, not always, not always, but most of the time it is. Here's another example. Look at how long these bearded dragon's nails are, and they just want you to cut this little tip right here. Now the live tissue we can't really see here, it's not a good picture, but let's assume it's back here. This, a proper bearded dragon's nail should be about this long. That's, that's where these nails should be. Now, I'm not saying you have to cut here, but this is where we have to get the tip of the nail to be. This area has to be here. Just cutting this tip will not do that. And I'm gonna show you an example on a bearded dragon with great nails. So spoiler alert guys, and that's why, she, this is also why she's wrong, way wrong. Bearded dragons are not made when they walk to have super long nails that they walk on their nails. In fact, they're made to have their fingers go up slightly and walk on their hands. See how Archimedes is sitting on her hand and then her fingers and then her claws are there? This is how they're made to walk. So they can do two things when they're walking, depending on what they're walking on. They can go high claw, raising their hand, or they can go flat and walk on the pad. Think of like a cat when they retract their nails and they just use their pads, or when they're climbing something, they put their claws out. Now bearded dragons, they don't have claws that can retract and go out. So it's very important to have very short nails like this. Look at how short those nails are. You see the live tissue right there. It is what? It's pink. And then there's a small, see how it's behind the cut? There's a small piece. So if I was cutting these, I could cut this nail and I could trim just that little bit of that edge off. And it's the same thing in that nail. The live tissue is quite a way behind. Now this picture, which I found online, are you going to stay there? Okay, you stay there. Actually is a better diagram of how far back the vein is, which is back here. And, but they're still telling you to cut here. This is not good. This should be cut here. That's where that cut should be. A little star. I'm not left-handed, but I try. That cut needs to be there because again, we want that vein to retreat. We don't want them to put all their pressure on their nail. We want them to put the pressure on their foot. That's really important. Here's her back feet. Look at how short these nails are. These are healthy bearded dragon nails. She's, I've never cut her vein, ever. Now, when I brought this up, I was told a few things. The person had asked, they had never cut nails before. My answer was, hey, if you need to, you can use a flashlight and you can try to use it to see the, the vein. This is, I've got natural sunlight, we can see it. The problem is, 
sometimes they have pitch black nails and you can't see the vein. So you can kind of go off this theory, but I've had bearded dragons where this vein has come almost into the tip. I'm sure you guys have too. Sometimes guys too, you're trimming a cat, you're trimming a bearded dragon and the bearded dragon moves its foot or moves its toe and you accidentally nip the top of the vein. Very little that if no pain is experienced by the dragon, you know, unless you cut it up here, but you get some blood. This person had never cut nails before. I told her that. And I told her, if you do get some bleeding, don't panic. Use a little cornstarch, you know, and doop, dab the nail and it will stop the bleeding. Now, this is important. Someone who's never cut nails before, you say, hey, get your nail clippers, get some cornstarch just in case, you know, try to find the, the vein and cut in front of it. <sighs> I have to show you the message for removal from this idiot lady. It, it will mind boggle you. So again, before I show the message, I just want to show you guys what I said. I said, every nail is different. This is the person they, they commented. Um, you do not want to cut the live tissue. The nail will bleed. If you do by accident, cornstarch will stop the blood. A light shined under the nail can help you see the tissue. Some nails are dark that can't be easily seen. And then I, I went on also a lot of great work is being done now in zoos, smaller pet dremels. Yeah, a lot of times the, the way we cut these nails, guys, they're going to almost be gone. But I was just giving food for thought, educating people. Um, this is why I got banned. And this is the statement. This is from the moderator, the expert. We do not advise cutting nails close to the wick. The wick. Candle wick? Long nails should be cut by a vet. So no injuries happen. Well, first of all, I didn't advise to cut. Nowhere in here did I advise. Where are you going? Nowhere in here did I advise cutting. I said, watch out for it. And no, vets don't need to cut nails. This is one of the most simplest things. But I've noticed with this particular moderator, almost every answer she is, she gives is, go to the vet. Well, you're a moron. That's why you're saying go to the vet. And you shouldn't be a moderator of this popular group. And guys, shouldn't go to this group. And you'll see her. She's the only active mod. Um, but this group is super close-minded, guys. They don't want to hear any discussion on loose substrate. They don't want to hear any discussion on cohabitate. These are things, whether you feel right or wrong, personally, I agree that you shouldn't do either. But people have done amazing work on both. And, you know, in the wild, bearded dragons don't live on tile or newspaper or paper towel. So you can do some loose substrate right if you do it correctly. <sighs> she messaged me and said, if you cut the nail, the bearded dragon will get an infection. It will die. Doesn't the bearded dragon have an immune system? If the tank is clean, you put a little stopper there. Why is just cutting the nail going to kill it? The last thing I want to leave is these experts, experts. She's got two young bearded dragons. They look to be four or five years old. Why do the experts always have a five-year-old, a three-year-old bearded dragon? Why do they never have 15-year-old bearded dragons like I do, 16-year-old, 17-year-old, and multiple of them? That's some food for thought that these experts always have young and always different young and the young always come in and, you know, the old one dies. And in these groups, it's, they all think it's very normal when your bearded dragon dies at five years old. Very odd. Um, Archimedes doesn't even like it. Yeah, bearded dragon owners in capitals. They're crap. And that moderator's crap. Sorry. But if you're in that group, get out of there. They're wrong. And let her know she's wrong. To stay in a group like that, I feel really bad. Because, guys, I got to tell you why I'm lit up about this. Is when I was in there, there's people begging for information. Begging. They don't know. And you have the person, one of the people in charge of the group, giving old information, wrong information, and close-minded about actual information like UVB where you use a solar meter, like um, actually working with dragons for over 15 years of experience. One last interaction I gave her, and I just wanted her to know, and it was actually on this nail interaction. I said, hey, because she had been removing some of my posts. I said, I think you should know a little bit about me. I said, I've... I've been running a nonprofit reptile rescue for over 15 years, 401c3 registered, legit rescue. I go, I have more years of experience. I work professionally with zoos and vets in the United States and outside the United States. Um, I've been flown outside the United States to do things. 
with reptiles, with vets, with zoos to teach them procedures and educate them. Wow, shocker. What a concept. Um, and I said, you know, I would love to show proof and discuss with you and maybe evolve. Banned. Why did I get, why did that post get banned? Because it was advertising a rescue, she said, and giving bad advice. The bad advice was, you can cut the nail, just don't cut the vein. And if you do, use cornstarch. Using cornstarch was bad advice. Idiot lady. And just saying I work for a rescue for 15 years is not advertising anything. I use a solar meter. Am I advertising this? No. I'm filming on this white table. Am I advertising this table? No. Now, if I said, go buy a solar meter, it's the best thing. Let me show you everything to use, blah, blah, blah. I shut the light off, by the way. Then I'm advertising it. So you have a power trip lady who really shouldn't, probably shouldn't even be in the group, let alone controlling the group, running it. And if you're in Bearded Dragon Owners, I suggest you join the one that's all lowercase, much nicer moderator, um, and people in there are much more friendly. Uh, and I'll be posting in that one. That's a big thing. I'll be posting in the lowercase one. The uppercase, Bearded Dragon Owners, bad moderators, man. Bad, one crazy active moderator. Oof. And, she, and she's the only one, so she destroys that. So that group is useless because you either agree with her or you don't agree with her. And if you don't agree with her, banned. No using facts, just banned. 